So I'm going to say a few things about Carol Ann Duffy's poem, Litany. Like Confession, it's another poem in which we are thrust back into the childhood of the poet. And like Prayer, it's another poem in which the spiritual and sacred are very much intermingled with the everyday and the secular. It's a poem in which the young poet uh, discovers the power of language, and as such we can uh, you know, assume it to be a very formative and profoundly influential experience for, for young Carol Ann Duffy. Although I suppose technically I should be referring to the speaker or the persona in the poet. But again, it's another poem like, um, I say, like Confession or like Stafford Afternoons that feels incredibly autobiographical. The poem begins with the first of a couple of lists, the litanies of the title. Um, this one is... Can a list of consumer goods, candlewick bedspread, three-piece suite, display cabinet. You'll remember that in Larkin's poem here, he refers to how people push through plate glass swing doors to their desires. In this poem, however, the, the women, Duffy's mother and the other mothers that join her for these daily sessions, flicking through the catalogue, gossiping, sharing, trading gossip with each other, um, they're not... Um, looking at consumer goods in a shop, they're looking at them in the pages of a catalogue. It very much kind of gives us a particular moment in time, the 60s of Duffy's childhood, when uh, consumerism was kind of, you know, reaching, um, you know, really um, taking off and becoming a bit of a growth, a massive growth area. And Duffy finds a kind of poetry in these consumer goods, in brand names like Pyrex, the reference to Mrs. Barr and her American tan legs, the the colour of the of the tights there, this this poetry in the everyday and the banal that, that Duffy is discovering. The atmosphere in the room of, as these women gather is somewhat forced and uncomfortable. And this is kind of made clear to us via some of these similes that, that Duffy uses within the poem. She talks about how the, the tiny ladder, ladder in Mrs. Barr's leg ran up sly like a rumour. There is an atmosphere of intrigue, an atmosphere of gossip. Language embarrassed them. And this is a poem in which Duffy will exploit the full power of that embarrassment by the, by the close of the poem. They seem unhappy, these women. It seems there's there's not a real sense of joy here. The, the wives balanced their red smiles. That verb balanced implying something precu precarious um, and uncertain and insecure about them. The terrible marriages crackled, cellophane round polyester shirts. Again, the metaphor coming from the consumer goods that were becoming rampant um, in society. The lounge would seem to bristle with eyes. Again, this idea, that verb bristle, suggesting that this is not a place where anybody feels any sense of ease, any sense of comfort. And they are, the eyes are hard as the bright stones in engagement, in engagement rings. Another, um, there are many similes utilised in this poem, and, and all of them seem to, to convey that sense of, of a nervousness, and a world that is not quite not quite at ease with itself here, um, and that continues into the into the third stanza. It's a sta it's a poem of four stanzas. Um, an embarrassing word broken to bits tends to the air like an accident. Again, another simile with these negative overtones, negative connotations. This was the code I learned at my mother's knee. Um, you know that word. Code again, suggesting that not everything is not as it seems on the surface. That that Duffy is having to pry uh, underneath to prize up the the real meaning of these gestures of these conversations that the women are, that the women are indulging in. Like uh, Duffy, rather, um, even reflects on on language in another of the sort of really viv vivid visual images within the poem. A year of mass graves of wasps in a jam jar. A butterfly stammered itself in my curious hands. Again, the, the mass grave of wasps suggesting something ominous and negatives, uh, negative even. The butterfly stammered. We get a real image there of this kind of 
trapped butterfly fluttering as hard as it can but you know with, unable to get out from its imprisonment but the verb stammered itself has these carries these con connotations of language of communication and of course a, an inability to communicate into the into the fourth stanza and we get to the real meat of the poem where the young duffy and you can almost sense that she knows exactly what she is doing here tells her mother in the company of all these women where embarrassment is the dominant emotion about a boy in the playground who told me sorry about this mum but i'm going to have to drop the f-bomb again told me to fuck off forgive me you get here a sense from duffy a thrilled malicious pause salted my tongue like an imminent storm another powerful simile there but that salted my tongue she can taste the power of language here and for someone who's going to become a poet this as i said before must be a particularly searing and formative moment now a second list this time from her mother as she reels off the apologies mrs bar mrs hunt mrs emery sorry mrs rain yes I can summon their names. This litany is it's again seared into the mind, into the memory of the poet. My mother's mute shame, the taste of soap. It was a common threat back then, um, possibly still is, to you know, a mother to wash your, the child's mouth out with soap. After my mum's seen this, and I dropped the f bomb, though she's probably going to be you know whacking some um, whacking a bar of soap in my gob as well. And uh, Duffy. Has they had this experience, her mum has washed her mouth out with soap. She has been, you know, to be purged, to be cleansed. But what lingers is that, that, that thrill, the knowledge that language is something powerful, something you can, uh, you can use to transgress and to violate this, this sacred space. Hence the litany, the religious title to the poem. There's a lot of comparisons with Larkin poems I've already mentioned uh, here. The large, cool store. Uh, we can find, um, you know, examples um, where Larkin himself, um, you know, uses uh, everyday language to make more, um, you know, significant points. That mix between the everyday and the banal and something more transcendent and spiritual is a very much a key um, figure in Larkin's poem. AO2 wise, Loads of similes in this poem, loads of really inventive use of sejura, loads of really, you know, like that salted, like that stammered, some really powerful uh, language that Duff is using here. And so there's a lot to, to get yourself stuck into. AO3 context wise, loads of poems to compare with across the two collections, but also, you know, like I said, this is a, you know, a real portrait of a particular time the looking through the catalogues the pyrex the way that you know people's lives were shaped by the consumer goods that they dreamt of the way these women seem to be kind of you know excluded from the world of work and they have their own um sort of time together um away from um, away from husbands away from um you know the, the world of the world of work which they seems that they haven't yet um moved into so it is a real um freezing of a particular moment in society so that was Litany. Um, I'll be back soon with uh, a guide to another of the Duffy and Larkin poems. In the meantime, bye-bye.